The next topic we're going to talk about are simple harmonic functions. Simple harmonic functions can be um, represented by either a cosine function or a sine function. So we've kind of talked about these similar problems in the past when we were graphing sine and cosine and we were doing applications. I don't know if you remember, but we were looking at the tide, how the tide, there was high tide and low tide, and we could represent that with either a sine or a cosine function. So we're going to look at a simple harmonic function. Let me just read through this and then let's talk about some certain examples. So in front of you, it says simple harmonic functions. So an object that moves on a coordinate axis so that the displacement D from its rest position at time T is either given by D of T equals A cosine omega T or D of T is equal to A sine omega T. Where A and omega are greater than zero or where A and omega greater than zero, our constants moves the simple harmonic motion. The motion has the amplitude of absolute value of A and a period T of two pi all over omega. So again, some, um, similar to what we were doing in the past when we were graphing sine and cosine functions. That absolute value of the coefficient in front of sine or cosine, that was the amplitude. And we could find that period by looking at two pi divided by omega. The frequency f of an object in simple harmonic motion is the number of oscillations per unit of time. Since the period is the time required for one oscillation, it follows that the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. That is F that represents our frequency is equal to one over capital T where T is representing our period, which is equal to omega over two pi. Again, omega greater than zero. So think about having a spring. If it's in resting position, I haven't taken that spring and pulled it down. Um, we would say that's either in resting position or equilibrium position. As I pull that spring down and then I release it, that spring is gonna start bouncing back and forth. We are gonna just look at these problems for simple harmonic functions so it continues at the same rate. A lot of times, um, applications, real life situations that would slow down until it start, starts to rest. And that's called a dampened harmonic function. But we're in this class just going to look at the simple harmonic functions. So let's look at an example. And I have one in front of us. The following example says d of t is equal to five cosine pi halves t. Describe the motion of the object. What is the maximum displacement from its rest position? When is the time required for one oscillation? And what is the frequency? So looking at d of t, I see that this is equal to five cosine pi halves t. One other thing before we continue with this problem, I just kind of wanted to state, if you are starting at the rest position, you want to use your sine function. If you recall, sine function started at the origin or at the midway line, if we had some vertical shift, and then it increased and came down. Where if we were looking at a cosine function that did not start at our origin or midway line, it started at our maximum point, unless our A value is negative and then it was um, a reflection across the X axis. So it'd be going in the opposite direction when we started for sine and when it came down and then up. For cosine, we would have started at the minimum value and came up if our A value the number coefficient in front of our sine or cosine was negative. That's what's going to happen. 
But the main point I want to say is if you're starting at the rest, resting position for your application, you're going to use sine. And if you're not starting at the resting position, you're going to use your cosine function. So back to our problem that we have, d of t is equal to 5 cosine pi half t. Part A wants us to describe the motion of that object. Well, because I have a cosine function and my number in front of the cosine is positive, I know I'm starting at my maximum value. So I'm not starting at the resting position. So let's look at graphing this. And that's a good review um, for what we did in chapter seven in our textbook with graphing trigonometric functions. So I know my amplitude is the absolute value of A, which is equal to five. So let's find our period. We can either look at two pi divided by omega, or in the past, we were looking at sandwiching the argument of our trigonometric function, which in this case is pi halves t between zero and two pi, and then solving for the variable in between our inequalities. So in this case, we can clear that fraction and get rid of the two in the denominator by multiplying each side of our inequality by two. So multiplying everything in here by two, we get that two times zero is zero, is less than or equal to two times pi halves t, which is pi t, which is less than or equal to two times four, up uh, two times two pi, which is four pi. Then we isolated t, we could do that by dividing everything through by pi. So dividing everything through by pi. We get that t is between zero and four. So that length between zero and four, because there's no um, horizontal shift or phase shift is what we were calling that. So since there's no phase shift here, um, the length between zero and four is four. So I can see that my period is four. So it's gonna take four seconds to complete one oscillation. So once we found our period, we know our starting point and an end point of one of our oscillations. So zero, Four was the ending spot. We then looked for our halfway point, which is easy in this case. Between the zero and four would be two. The quarter way point would be one. And the three quarter point in this case is three. Our amplitude is five. There's no vertical shift. And it's a cosine function. So we're starting at five. We come down and hit the midway line at the quarter point. And then at the halfway point, we're hitting our min value, which is negative five. We turn back around, hit our midway line, which is in this case, the x-axis, and then hit our max. And so graphing one period, our graph looks like this. So we're starting at the max position and um, it's oscillating back and forth between five and negative five. So what is the maximum displacement from its rest position? So the maximum displacement is at five or five away from the resting position.
What is the time required for one oscillation? Well, we already solved for that. That was four seconds. And now we wanna find the frequency. So the frequency, we can find that by one over our period, which is one over four. So our frequency, so in one second, one unit of time, which is in terms of seconds, our, our oscillation is only gone a quarter of the way. So the frequency is equal to one fourth. So these are, again, a great um, review for graphing sine and cosine functions. So let's look at another example. So in our next example, d of t is equal to negative nine sine one quarter of t. t is representing in seconds. And so looking at this, again, we want to describe our motion of the object. I notice that it's a sine function, so we're starting at the resting position. And I notice that there's a negative in front of the coefficient in front of sine. So instead of increasing from that resting position, we're going to decrease. Let's figure out what the period is. So we can do that by using the formula or like I like to do is sandwich it between a normal period. And for sine, it's between zero and two pi. So we have zero is less than or equal to one fourth T is less than or equal to two pi. So let's clear um, the fraction and we can multiply everything through by four. So four times zero is zero is less than or equal to four times one fourth, that's just one. And then T is less than or equal to four times two pi, which is eight pi. So right here, I can see that one, um, the time required for one oscillation is eight pi seconds. So what is the maximum displacement? Well, let's graph this really quickly. And so if we look at the graph of this, our maximum is going to be at nine away from the resting point. And then breaking this up into quarter, half, three quarter, and end point. Well, we know the end value of one period is eight pi starting with zero. Halfway point between zero and eight pi is four pi. Quarter way point halfway between zero and four pi is two pi. And the halfway point between four pi and eight pi is six pi. And it's sine, so we're starting at the resting position. It's a negative coefficient in front, so we are decreasing first. So at two pi, we hit negative nine. At four pi, we're back up to resting position. And at six pi, we're hitting nine. And then at eight pi, we're back to the resting position. And so looking at the graph of one period or one oscillation, we get the following. So the maximum displacement, the maximum distance between that resting position um, is nine. And then what is the frequency? Well, that is one over our period, which is one over eight pi. seconds. Actually, not seconds. 
it's a unit of time. So for that one second, we've gone one over eight pi. So that is our displacement. So looking at one more of these examples with some more shifts in there, and then we'll look at an application problem. The next problem in front of us says d of t is equal to four plus three sine pi t. Again, we're gonna describe the motion of the object. What is the maximum displacement from the rest position? What is the time required for one oscillation? And what is the frequency? So we have this simple harmonic function. Notice that we have a vertical shift here. We have that four in front, or we're adding four to that trigonometric function, three sine pi t. So I know I have a vertical shift of four. So my resting position is now in a new spot. My middle A line is gonna be y equals four. So let's look at this graph. We now again know our midway line is at four. So I'm gonna put a dotted line for my midway line. And I know that the coefficient in front of my trigonometric function is three. And so from my midway line, we are gonna go up three. So at seven, and we're gonna go down three, so at one. Let's figure out what our period is. And so sandwiching that in between zero and two pi, we have zero is less than or equal to pi t is less than or equal to two pi, dividing everything through by pi. So zero divided by pi is zero, pi t divided by pi is t, and two pi divided by pi is two. So it's gonna take um, two seconds for one oscillation. And so now breaking this up, starting at zero seconds for one oscillation, ending at two seconds. Halfway point would be one between zero and two. My quarter way point is gonna be one half. And my three quarter point is one and a half. So three halves. This is a sine function. So I'm starting at the resting position. My coefficient in front of sine is positive, so I am in increasing. And so at one half, I reach seven. At one, I'm back to the midway line. At three halves, I'm at one. And at two, I'm back up to the midway line. And so now we have this graph of one of our oscillations. The maximum displacement here from the rest position. So what is that distance in here? And even go down because that's the position from the resting line. So that maximum displacement, that displacement in there, well, seven minus four is three. So our maximum displacement is three. If they give us units, you would use the units here. The time required for one oscillation, we already found that when we were looking for um, one period. And that was two seconds. And then for a unit of time, we wanna know how much of our, our graph our object has moved. So that again is one over our period, one over two. And so for one unit of time, we have done one half of an oscillation. Okay, so now let's look at some applications of these simple harmonic functions. 
So the next problem in front of us states, an object attached to a coiled spring is pulled down to a distance of 11 centimeters from its resting position, and then it's released. Assuming that the motion is a simple harmonic with a period of two pi seconds, write an equation that relates the displacement D of the object from its resting position after T seconds. Also assume that the positive direction of the motion is up and T equals zero, the object is at resting position and moving down. Okay, so we're at resting position and then we're moving down and we wanna find this equation D of T that represents the position of our object after time T. Okay, so it's pulled down a distance of 11 centimeters. So I know that my absolute value of A is equal to 11 centimeters. I'm pulling the object down. And so I know that A has to equal negative 11. I'm um, starting um, by pulling it down. Wait, so at t, time t equals zero, the object is at the resting position and then moving down. So since we're starting at the resting position at time t equals zero, that tells me I'm using my sine function. So now let's look at our period. with a length of one oscillation. So it tells me that assuming that the motion is simple harmonic with a period of two pi seconds. So recall our period, they denoted it with capital T, is equal to two pi divided by omega. And so we know what T is, we know T is two pi is equal to two pi divided by omega. I can see this as one, but if you don't, or if it didn't come out that easily, we would solve for omega. So let's clear our fraction by multiplying omega on both sides of our equation. We get two pi omega is equal to two pi. Isolating omega, dividing both sides by two pi, we get omega is equal to one. Anything else that we need to know? I believe that is it. So now we have the information to find our equation. So D of T is equal to A, which is negative 11 sine of omega T. So one times T or just T. So we were able to find the equation that represented the displacement of the object after t seconds. So let's look at one more example for this topic. The following equation or following example says, let me just pause for a second as the clocks go off. Actually, I was just thinking about, you know, I just paused that because the, the clocks are, are dinging in my house. Um, and that pendulum back there, I don't know if you can see it in the background of the clock, that we could represent by a simple harmonic function. Maybe I should get some more information about the distance that it's traveling from this displacement of resting, the pendulum resting. Displacement, the highest part it goes, would be our displacement and then back. But anyways, um, so let's look at the following example that is in front of us, which says find an equation of a simple harmonic motion with frequency f equals one cycles per second and amplitude is two centimeters. Assume zero displacement occurs at t equals zero. 
Okay, so it tells me that I'm assuming that the zero displacement occurs at t equals zero. That means I'm starting at my resting position. Starting at my resting position, I'm going to use my sine function. My amplitude is two centimeters. So A is equal to two. And I know my frequency is one. So I need to figure out what my argument is of my sine function. And so we can do that by looking at our frequency as one cycle per second. Um, we know that one over T is equal to one. T though is equal to two pi over omega. So I have one over two pi divided by omega is equal to one. I don't really like that complex fraction, but we can rewrite it. That's one divided by two pi over omega. Dividing with fractions, we take the first term, in this case one, times the reciprocal of what we were dividing by, which is omega over two pi would be that reciprocal equals one. So solving for omega, getting omega by itself, I would just multiply both sides of my equation by two pi and two pi times omega over two pi is just omega is equal to two pi times one, which is two pi. So I have now all the pieces I need and knowing that it's a sine function to create my equation that would represent the displacement of the object after t seconds. So d of t is equal to two sine omega, which is two pi times t. So that is the information on simple harmonic function. In our textbook, this is section 9.5. Hopefully this was a great review for you guys and graphing trigonometric functions sine and cosine. Um, our final is coming up in like a month, maybe a little more than a month, but um, so it's a good review because our final will be uh, cumulative.